Hi, this is Wendy. Today I'm going to be demonstrating for you my Shasta Daisy sweater in the large size. This sweater is available in sizes small through extra large on my Etsy channel and on Ravelry and Ribbler. This pattern calls for a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and a DK weight yarn or a number three weight yarn because it's intended to be a warmer weather sweater I'd recommend doing it in a cotton blend. This is a 60% cotton 40% acrylic and it's from ecruyarn.ca. I'm just going to go and wind a couple of these up and then we'll get started. We're going to start with the body piece. This sweater is made in four pieces. So there's a right hand body piece and you can see there's a sleeve cut out in the middle and there's a left hand body piece and two sleeves that are the same and then there's a little bit of trimming around the edges. We're going to be doing what's called a crossed double crochet stitch and the nice thing is that it looks very similar on either side. So we can just make two body pieces exactly the same and use one right side out and the other one I guess wrong side out but it's the same thing we're just going to make two of them and one side will show on one half and the other side will show on the other half. And then we'll make two sleeves, add some trimming around the front edge and assemble the whole thing and that's how this Shasta Daisy sweater goes together. So as I mentioned I'm going to be making a size large and it starts with a chain of 73. So I'm not going to make you watch that whole thing. I'm going to chain 73 and then I'll come back and we'll carry on from there. The first row is very straightforward. Single crochet in the second chain from the hook and across. Because I started with 73 chains and I did my first single crochet in the second chain, I will end up with 72 single crochets. I'll come back when I get to that point. If you're making a small, medium, or extra large, of course you'll follow the instructions for the number of chains for those sizes. At the end of that first single crochet row, we're going to turn and chain three. That takes the place of our starting double crochet. And in the second and third stitches from the hook, so not this first one because that belongs to the chain three, but in the second and third one we're going to work our first crossed double crochet. And it looks like this. You're going to do a double crochet in the third single crochet. So this one right here. Do a double crochet. So you've skipped over the second one. Now you're going to do a double crochet in that second one by crossing back over in front and working a double crochet. And that gives you that crisscrossed effect. Then we're going to go to the next two stitches which are the fourth and fifth one. We're going to double crochet in the fifth one and then go back and double crochet in the fourth one, crisscrossing back in front. Then skip one, double crochet, go back and double crochet in the previous one. Skip one, double crochet, go back and put one in the one that you skipped. Okay, and that gives you this nice crisscrossed effect. You're going to continue that all the way across until there is one stitch remaining. Then you'll double crochet in the last stitch. So you'll have, 
essentially a double crochet on each end, a chain three on this end and a double crochet on the other end with all these crossed double crochets in between. At the end of row two, when you have one stitch left, as I mentioned, double crochet in that stitch, turn and chain one, and single crochet in each stitch across for row three. So as I mentioned, single crochet in each of those double crochets and then put your last one in the chain three turning chain. So you should have the same number of single crochets in that row that you did in the first row. So in my case that's 72. So if you need to count, make sure that it's exactly the same. Then we're going to turn and chain three for the next row and do another row of those crossed double crochets. So going into the third one, work a double crochet, go back to the second one and work another double crochet. Skip one, do a double crochet, go back and put one in the one that you skipped. And you're just going to repeat these two rows now for a total of 32 rows, which will get you up to where you divide for the armhole. I would strongly suggest that when you get to 6 or 8 or 10 inches worth of the sweater done, double check your gauge. So unless you've made a large gauge swatch already to check it, which many of us want to get started on the project and we skip that part, I would really suggest that you double check and make sure that it's going to work for you. You don't want to put all sorts of time into a sweater and find out it doesn't fit because you should have gone up or down a hook size or maybe your yarn is not quite as heavy as what I used and your gauge is not coming out quite the same. Okay, so repeat those rows two and three for 32 rows, ending on a row two, which is the crossed double crochet row. Then I'll come back and show you how to divide for the sleeve and shape the front and the neckline. Okay, with the 32 rows complete, we're going to work over to the point where we divide for the armhole and then continue working our way up for the back. So this side is the center back and we're going to work over to the armhole and then work up to the neckline at the back. So I've ended with a crossed double crochet row and I am just going to single crochet 32. Again that's for the large. Um, for the other three sizes the numbers will be slightly different. Just refer to your pattern. Okay, 32. We're going to stop there and turn and just repeat rows two and three on this short section which is from the armhole to the center back for a total of 18 rows for the large, 16 for the small medium and 20 for the extra large. So just like before, start with a chain of three and then in the third and second double crochet, work your crossed double crochet. Then as before, just follow the pattern. The next row will be single crochet. The following row will be just like this one and so on for a total of 18 rows. And then we will move on to shaping the neck and the shoulder. I'll come back at that point. I hope you're enjoying this project so far. When you have finished the number of rows indicated on the pattern, you will be ready to start a crossed double crochet row. And for this size, again, follow your pattern for the other sizes, but you're going to work the number of cross double crochets indicated on the pattern. So in this case, for the large, it's nine. So that's two, four, six, eight, and nine. 
crossed double crochets. Then skip the next two stitches and double crochet in the next one. That's going to form your dropped down section for the back of the neck. And then turn, chain one and single crochet in each chain across or in each stitch across rather. As before, do your last single crochet in the turning chain. Work the next crossed double crochet row until you have eight crossed double crochets completed. Then after you've completed eight, double crochet in the last stitch. So you're skipping two, double crocheting in the last one. Chain one, single crochet the number of stitches indicated on the pattern. In this case it's nine. That won't get you back all the way to the end of the end of the row, just part way. Then pull your thread through, bind off, and cut. And there you have the shoulder and the back neck. For the front side of the body piece, join your yarn into the seventh stitch. So leave six for the armhole, join it into the seventh one. Single crochet across that row and then work an additional four rows in pattern. So five all together and then I will come back and we will shape the v-neck. Okay, with the five rows done, we're going to be shaping the front edge or the v-neck of the sweater. And it's pretty easy to do. So for your next row, which is going to be a cross double crochet row, chain three, and work your first crossed double crochet in the fourth and fifth stitches. So we're going to skip the spaces for the first crossed double crochet and go right over to the second one. Like that. Then continue in pattern across. On the return row, which is your single crochet row, single crochet until that turning chain and put your last single crochet in the top of that turning chain. Chain three for the next row and do the same thing. Skip over the second and third stitches where you would normally put your first crossed double and put the first crossed double in the fifth and fourth stitch. And just continue decreasing in this manner along the front until it gets to the number of stitches indicated in your pattern. So again, follow your pattern, but I'm just demonstrating with the large so you understand the concepts of how this works. So for a large, you continue with the front until there are eight crossed double crochets left. That leaves us still one, or sorry, two rows short of the length of the back along the sleeve. So we're going to do one more row continuing even, or pair of rows. 
by going back to what we did originally when we had the straight side. So chain three, do a crossed double crochet in the third and second stitches and across. So there's the next row of eight crossed double crochets. And in order to make this shoulder match the back shoulder, chain one, slip stitch in the first nine stitches and single crochet in the last nine stitches for a large. The others may be different. Put your last single crochet in that turning chain at the end of the row and bind off. And that's how we make the shoulder shaping at the front match the back a little bit. And the two shoulders will be sewn together like so with the sleeve piece on the side and the front folding across the front of the back piece like that. Okay, now we're going to move on to the sleeves. The first um, three rows of the sleeve are worked exactly like the first three rows of the body piece. So you do your chain to start for a large, it's 67 chains, then your row one, your single crochet, your row two, work your crossed double crochets, and row three, another single crochet row. Row four is where we start the decreases for the sleeve. It's slightly different than the decreases for the front. It doesn't decrease at quite the same rate. And in order to do that, for row four, we're going to turn and chain three. And I'm going to skip the second double crochet and just put a single double crochet in the third one. So I'm not going to cross back. I'm just going to put a double crochet in the third stitch, then continue with my crossed doubles as before. So crossing four back over five and so on. So that's what that decrease should look like on this end of your sleeve. Skip the second stitch, double crochet in the third one, and then carry on with your crossed doubles. At the other end of that fourth row, we're going to repeat that same decrease in reverse. So with three stitches remaining, instead of doing the last crossed double crochet, just double crochet in that third last stitch and then in the last stitch. So you'll be skipping the second one, second last one. Okay? And from there, just repeat those two rows, your single crochet row and your decrease cross double crochet row until 17 rows have been worked in total for the sleeve. Once you've finished all your four pieces, the two body pieces and the two sleeves, it's time to start the finishing edging and the assembly. So lay your two body pieces out side by side so that you can have the two center backs next to each other. Those are going to be your facing sides. You're going to add three rows of single crochet down each side of the center back so that you can have both of your finishing rows on the same side, you will need to start the right hand piece from the top edge and the left hand piece from the bottom edge on your facing side. 
that will give you two edges that look like this. And I suggest putting one single crochet in the side of the single crochet rows and two in the side of the double crochet rows. So three rows all together on each side and then you'll sew up the center back. And I'm doing that here just with a simple slip stitch. And I'll show you how that works. So I put the hook in the back leg of that stitch, like so, from the front, and pick up the corresponding one on the other side, inserting the hook front to back, like that. Then pick up the strand from behind, go through both of those stitches and through the one on your hook. I'll show you again. Go through the right hand side, the back side of the stitch from the front, the left hand side in the back side of the stitch from the front. Pick up and draw through both of those and the one on your hook. You can of course just stitch them up with a whip stitch or single crochet them together, but this gives you a nice single crochet row right up the center. When you have finished sewing up that back seam, I would suggest putting the right sides together, the facing sides together, sew across the top of your shoulder seam. Leave the sleeves out for now. Sew across the other side on the shoulder seam and then try your sweater on. The idea is to put three more rows at the front on either side, but if you find that the sweater is a little too tight, this is where you can really dial in the fit by adding maybe a couple more rows on each side at the back and a couple more on each side at the front. So once you've done that, you'll start at the lower front edge of the sweater attach your yarn and again put one single crochet in the single crochet rows, two in the double crochet rows. Work your way all the way up the front, around the neck, all the way across the back and down the other side of the front. Then back up and around doing that for a total of three rounds and then you'll sew your front pieces together in the same manner with your uh, whip stitch or your slip stitch. Then all that's left to do is to sew in each of the sleeves with the seams at the bottom and your sweater will be completely assembled. And there's the Shasta Daisy sweater all finished. I hope that you enjoyed this project. Drop me a comment and let me know what you think. And I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe so that I can continue making these videos. Have a super day.